I'm excited to talk to you about our final week of patience. But before we begin, let's review our definition and memory verse with my friend, Emily. Hey friends, I'm so excited to review our definition and memory verse for patience. Our definition is trusting and waiting on God in all things. Can you do it with me? Trusting and waiting on God in all things. Great job. Now let's do our memory verse. Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Psalm 27, 13, and 14. Excellent job, friends. Now, back to you, Catherine. Thanks, Emily. We've been learning this entire month about trusting and waiting on God in all things. We've learned this as we saw that God helped Joseph be patient, even when he didn't understand. We've also learned that God's timing is best. And because this is true, we can patiently wait on the Lord. Today, we get to learn that we can be patient because God's plan is perfect. Actually, that's our finish line today. We can be patient because God's plan is perfect. We're gonna learn about this as we continue on with the life of Joseph found in the patriarch era on our Bible timeline. But before we keep going, Let's pause and answer a question. Grownups, when you see a question come up on the screen, pause the video and discuss it together. If you remember from our time together this month, we've seen that God helped Joseph be patient even in some really hard circumstances. Like when Joseph was sold by his 10 older brothers to be a slave in Egypt. Or when Joseph was thrown in prison for something he didn't even do. Joseph waited patiently for the Lord and God had not forgotten Joseph. And one day, many years later, God used Joseph to help out Pharaoh. If you remember, Pharaoh had a dream and he didn't know what it meant. Joseph told Pharaoh that there would be seven years of plenty of food followed by seven years of famine, which means food would be hard to find. Then Pharaoh did something crazy. He put Joseph to be second in control of all of Egypt. Joseph was charged with making sure that there was enough food for the years of famine. This is where our story picks up today. The famine from Pharaoh's dream finally happened, and it was so big that even Joseph's family back in Canaan was running out of food. So Jacob, Joseph's dad sent the 10 oldest sons over to Egypt in order to buy food. Let's open up to Genesis 42 to see what happens when they make it to Egypt. Since Joseph was governor of all Egypt and in charge of selling grain to all the people, it was to him that his brothers came. When they arrived, they bowed before him with their faces to the ground. Joseph recognized his brothers instantly, but he pretended to be a stranger. How do you think Joseph felt when his brothers bowed down to him? He was now second in control and could have done anything to pay them back. But instead, he chose to show them patience and kindness. He gave them food and even gave them their money back. What do you think happens next? Well, before we find out, let's go ahead and answer another question. Grownups, a question is coming at you in three, two, one. Joseph didn't know if his brother's hearts had changed, so he tested them to find out. Through a series of events, Joseph found out that God had changed their hearts, so he was finally ready to show his brothers who he was. Joseph's brothers were scared when they found out that this man in charge was their brother who they had been mean to. But once again, Joseph was patient and kind. Joseph moved his family to Egypt in order to provide for them through the years of famine. This doesn't make what Joseph's brothers did to him okay. But ultimately, Joseph trusted the Lord's plans. Let's read to see what Joseph tells his brothers. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. 
He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. Joseph knew that God's plan was perfect, even though he had to go through some really hard things for a really long time. God used Joseph exactly where he was in order to help provide food, not only for Joseph's family, but for all the other people who needed food during this time. Let's stop one final time to answer a question before we wrap up today. Grownups, you know what to do. Even though Joseph went through hardship, it was not a mistake. God used all of it to be a part of his perfect plan. Joseph and his brothers turned into the nation of Israel, and from this nation came Jesus. Friends, God always has a perfect plan. And one day, we may be able to see how the different parts of our story fits together too. But when we don't understand, we can trust God and patiently wait for His timing. Now, that doesn't mean that everything will turn out the way we want it to. Sometimes, we don't get the answers for the things we patiently wait for. But we can remember that God sees the big story and He knows how everything will fit together for good. One day, those of us who have put our faith in Jesus will be with God forever. Then there will be no more sadness and no more pain. He will wipe away every tear. So friends, after this video is over, take some time to pray and thank God for the truth that we can be patient because God's plan is perfect. Thanks so much for joining us as we wrapped up our month of patience. See you next time.